Retired army generals have formed a new political party to contest the national elections next year. The party is called Africa, Africans Reclaim. Its leader is General Maumela Mojo Motau, the former chief of defense intelligence. Welcome, sir. Thank you very much uh, for, for welcoming us to your studio. What does AAR mean? What is the story behind the name of your party? Yes, the story behind our, the name of our party is that we have been members of the African National Congress uh, for, for many, many years. Some of us joined the African National Congress in the mid-70s. Some of us joined in the late uh, 70s. But we didn't join the African National Congress because of its name. We joined the African National Congress because of its political program. That political program is what attracted most of us to the African National Congress, not to other movements. It was a political program which was actually directed at making sure that our country gets freedom from colonialism. Our country should be able to make sure that all South Africans live in peace as equals in a prosperous country. But what has transpired through the years and now in the past five years has become worse is that our country is falling apart. The African National Congress has actually jettisoned the political program which the movement, the African National Congress, has been following for many, many years. And we therefore tried for the past three, four years to try and speak to the African National Congress leadership. We started in 2020 in September speaking to the officials of the ANC who actually asked us to write a document on the issues which we're raising. And we wrote a document which we came to call the African National Congress Turnaround Strategy 2025. That strategy we presented to the officials. They actually instructed us to say they need a broader meeting. And they convened the National Executive Committee Working Committee to meet us and get what we were saying. I can tell you the details of the number of meetings and so on we are going to present during our uh, launch, which is taking place on the 7th of October, which is next week, Saturday. We are going to deal with the details. But suffice it to say that the African National Congress leadership failed totally to see the reasons behind what we were saying. And the African National Congress has been sliding away from our people. Today, our pe the majority of our people are saying they are not going to participate in the elections of next year. They are no longer interested. That means our people are losing confident confidence in democracy. And therefore, we as senior cadres of the 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 African National Congress, we decided on a new strategy because these people were elected at conference. If you were going to force them out, they were going to take us to court. So we decided that the best way is to form another political party, which is going to take away the support of the ANC in a big way in the coming year, in the elections. We want to believe that we are on the right course. We want to believe that our people, particularly the African people, are going to join us and support us on the route to try and better our country. Our country, everybody knows, I'm sure all South Africans will agree with us 
this economy cannot grow because it's being sabotaged. Sabotaged in many ways. Sabotaged through load shedding, sabotaging through destroying infrastructure, whether it's water, road networks, the railways. This is clear sabotage. I'm not uh, uh, going to say apartheid was better, but we inherited from apartheid a working system. Our people, we should acknowledge that. Messed it up. We are talking now of a situation where there is no manufacturing capacity being created. We are talking now about a country which is becoming an importing country with all the resources we have. If you look around all the uh, the, 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 it, it, the entry points of our country, take OR Tambo International, for example, going to, towards Pretoria, what do you see? You see that we are being prepared to be a, a, an importing country. You see that what is being built are not factories, it's warehouses. It's why we can't allow that type of thing to happen, where a country is just being sabotaged. How do you expect development of an economy where there is load shedding almost every day? Where factories close because there is no electricity? And what do we do? As very brilliant South Africans, I guess. Our coal is a problem when we use it for our own country. Therefore, that coal is seen as polluting and destroying the environment. But when we send it to Europe, it becomes clean energy. So you see trucks and trucks. Our roads are chocker blocked because of trucks taking coal to, to Europe. And I've looked at statistics. Out of 25 countries, South Africa is said to be one of the greatest polluters with 19 power stations, coal-fired power, power stations, coming from number one with over 3,000. Number two, number three, Four five is in Europe with over 300, over 500 power stations, coal-fired power stations. But South Africa with 19 and 14 working and 5 not working, it's said to be a major polluter. And we are buying that nonsense. We are buying that nonsense. And our factories are closing down. That, that is a problem which we, as cadres of the African National Congress, decided. Look, it was not for the name. Let's leave this African National Congress and then take the ANC proper, the ANC proper political program and make it our program which can save, save our people. Of course, we are not living in the 1955 we, we are in the 21st century. So even some of the things which our forebears were saying in 1955, some of them are dated. So we have tried to bring these things to the 21st century. That is why we came to that position. Are you able to share some of the major policies in your founding manifesto with us? Definitely, I'll tell you, the, the ones which are creating problems in our country, which are not going to be uh, appreciated by very few minority, is the question of land. You can't have a country where only 1% of the population is responsible for producing food because they own the land. We are talking here about the fertile agricultural land. We are not talking about land in the towns. That is land which is open for being, uh, I can, uh, to speculations. People can sell, buy, and sell land in in the in the in the in the cities and towns. But we are talking about that land which is lying fallow there, 
and somebody says it's my farm. We are saying we have to sacrifice. People have to sacrifice. We must make land available to all. That is very critical. The state must manage that. That's one, one important point which I wanted to make. The second thing is that, you see, the way South Africa has developed, I remember that Japan was a poor country in the 60s. I was a young man. Uh, I know the Japanese used to come to South Africa uh, buying cameras and radios, and they became a powerful country more than us. The Koreans did the same. The Chinese did the same. I remember as a young man, there was a, we had in South Africa, a company called Supersonic, which was producing radios. The Japanese bought it. We let, we let go. Now, I'm saying we can continue with an economy which is only exporting raw materials. Until when are we going to? Where, why are we not taking advantage of our endowments, mineral endowments? Look, let me, let me take show you something very, very frustrating. Here we have, got, we have got iron, we have got platinum, we have got chrome, we have got everything. But I tell you, nobody owns the patent of an engine of a car. It was owned by the Ford family. South Africa exports this iron to Europe, they make they make a block, heavy block of engine, and bring it back to South Africa for us to buy. What is wrong with us? Can't we just actually produce these blocks of engine for these companies which want to sell us cars? They tell them, we are going to produce some of these parts. Why, why, why shouldn't we be able to do that? Of course, I'm very keen for a change, as our, many, uh, 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 our political program says. We have to change the education system in South Africa. We have to change it. How do we compete with China? How do we compete with Korea? How do we compete with Russia, how do we compete with any other country, with the Americans? With an education which takes mathematics and science as another thing which anybody can choose doing. How, how can we do that? We have got institutions here. We have got big faculties of history. History which doesn't produce any commodity. We have got faculties which teach all manner of languages. And people get distinctions and get degrees. They are full there. Seven million youth in South Africa are unemployed. Out of that seven million, 60% are graduate. <laughs> graduate in which field? Theology, languages, history, and they are unemployable. They are unemployable. Our education system needs to change. They need, it needs to change. Fundamentally change. Next thing, I was looking at a match where the Springboks lost. They lost the match against a small little country on the island of, of the UK. And you know why they lost? They lost because the majority of the players who were making a difference in Ireland are South Africans. They are South Africans. Now, imagine if it was a war, what would those South Africans be? Killing their own people in South Africa? Dual citizenship is not good for our country. I can go on and on and show you. And I, we have solutions. I can tell you, for example, the mining corporations which export coal must donate coal first to ESCOM. And ESCOM must be forced to open all the 
power stations. We cannot be made fools. We can't. We can't, we can't stand there and watch our country going down to the drain because we don't have solutions. We do have solutions. And if people come to our launch on Saturday the 7th, they will catch all what we are saying. And I have no doubt South Africans will support us. Of course, here and there, people are going to have a problem. <laughs> because I can imagine farmers, uh, some of those who own tracts and tracts of land, are not going to be very happy about it. But sacrifices have to be made for change. Change is painful. Change is painful. But we will all have to live here and make our country a better place to live in. General, how would your party address key issues like unemployment, job creation? Yes, we have, we have solutions. Uh, I, I'll give you just one. We are saying there is no way. I told you 7 million youth, 60% graduates, they are not employable. You know? You are talking about this new generations where you are talking about artificial intelligence. You have left 7 million. The number will increase because others are still at school. And we said, let's not talk theory. Let's do practical things. And we are saying, you need to reskill these unemployed youth. And the only way you can do that is to have a national service where the youth will go and uh, they are going to be taught discipline. We should not need to run away from it. I'm from a township now. There's no electricity, of course, there. That's why I moved to, to Morningside to do this interview. When you are there, you can see that we are creating criminals. They are unemployed. There is no hope. And we are saying a national service must be one of our creative way of starting to deal with unemployment and not only un unemployment but crime but crime secondly we are going to, to to go with others but let me give you this we can have our own business happy to employ foreigners because they might be cheaper cheap labor and we we just surrender ourselves to that we're saying it is not going to be acceptable foreigners will come here when as and when we want them to come foreigners cannot own micro and small businesses they can't we can't i mean we are not father christmas for everybody of course these things Needs, we, we're going to force our neighbors. Perhaps if they can't take any other route, they must take our route. They must have the national service also. All these countries around, around us, they've passed laws which preclude foreigners from being in small and micro businesses. Only South Africa didn't do that. Zimbabwe has done that. Botswana has done that. Including not only our neighbors, even Nigeria has, has passed that. We are the only ones. Because we are Father of Christmas and our people are complaining. And if we face this serious crime, no, we can't do that. General, would you uh, venture a, a prediction as to the outcome of next year's elections? Yes, we are going to win. We are going to win. The overwhelming majority in this country have lost confidence in the formal and leading parties in this country. They have lost confidence. I'm not the only one who says that. If I go to the ANC, go to the DAR, EFF, they are all looking for forward to rule by coalition government. Because they know they are not going to win outright. Secretary General of the ANC, actually, I don't know, I didn't expect the sec a Secretary General of an organization to stand up in public and say, those who believe they will win and get 40-something percent, they are sick. 
he himself predicts 30% for the ANC. I think it's reasonable. It's reasonable. They are going to get less than that. They are going to get less than that. The DA is not is no longer going to get that 20% they, they believe in. They, they will not get it. EFF will not grow. After our launch, most of the small parties are going to fold. Because most of these parties don't have programs, political programs, which can address the situation which we face. They don't have. They don't have solutions. The ANC is talking about uh, uh, pr uh, priding itself for actually bringing great R to primary school. Huh? Fairwood did that. I went to primary school. I started with sub A, sub B before I started standard one. So, they, these are the things that come. They continue telling us we'll grow the economy uh, and, 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 and create jobs. How? The manufacturing industry is shutting down. The mining co corporations are laying off the workers. How are they going to do it? None of them has got a solution. Some of them are reciting ideologies. Like the DA recites ideology. You know, privatize, privatize. We're privatizing a country which is in this serious problem. Problems solve the solutions. They insist there and say, "Oh no, uh, uh, land expropriation without compensation, my foot." Where would they get the, the any court which will support them when they expropriate? For the coming fifty years, they will not uh, expropriate, not even a single can, a farm, not even a single. That's my. That's our person. Thank you very much. That was General Marmela Mojo Motau, the leader of Africa, Africans Reclaim, a new political party that will launch later this week. Thank you, sir. Thank you.